and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to Loom, a Room for Discussions Lustrum Month. This month, I truly believe, is going to be the best month in the history of Room for Discussion. Our aim, uh, a history which approximately started actually 10 years ago, around that area, when our first ever interview took place. It was in the midst of the financial crisis, or what we now know as the Great Recession. Our aim then and our aim now is still the same, to bridge the gap between academic theory and reality, between academic theories in your textbooks and the reality you see on the TV screens and newspaper coverages. This month, the reality we'll try to uncover is the, reality, uh, is the, currency, uh, the current crisis facing our main, our main institutions, democracy, the EU, and world trade. Today, we'll start with Carlos Puigdemont, former president of Catalonia, who exemplifies one of the key events that show how democracy is in crisis. Next week, we'll move on to Nieli Cruz, former commissioner of the European Union. Together with her, we'll discuss the challenges and opportunities facing this extremely polarizing institution. Lastly, on the third week, we'll discuss with Robert Koopman, We'll discuss the institution, the World, Trade, uh, the World Trade Organization with him, an institution whose future depends on the ideas, thoughts, and decisions of one wild man. However, if there's one thing I would change about this lost term theme, it's a question mark. I would add a question mark. Are we really in crisis, or is this just room for discussion being overly dramatic to try to get you guys all to be here? Regardless, I hope that by the end of this month, that, that question is answered. Today's interview will be hosted by two of our lovely alumni. So please, give a warm welcome to Joachim Jordan and Jasper Van Dyke. All right. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Welcome here at Room for Discussion. My name is Joachim Jordan, this is Jasper Van Dyke, and usually we start off our interviews here by saying that today we have a very special guest. But ladies and gentlemen, today we actually have a very <laughs> special <laughs> guest. <laughs> Namely, the former president of Catalonia, Mr. Carlos Puigdemont. He became known for the organization of the referendum on the 1st of October last year, after which he declared independence for a couple of seconds. He then <laughs> moved to Spain, uh, sorry, he moved to Brussels, um, after which he spent now for one year in exile. He's not able to go back to Spain, but he was able to accept our invitation here at our platform because we have a lot of interesting things to discuss. Yes, so what are we going to talk about? So there are three main topics we want to discuss the upcoming hour. Um, first of all, we want to discuss this rise of this independence movement in Catalonia. And secondly, we want to ask the very big question of what is democracy? But we want to ask this question inside the context of this Catalonian crisis. And finally, we want to ask ourselves the question, to what extent is this Catalan crisis also a European crisis? Well, so we're all here at Room for Discussion. So it's also possible for you to join the discussion. Um, if you would like to do so, you could raise your hand. There are a few moments in the interview you could do so. And Pierre, yeah, with the mic, he's there. Uh, he will walk towards you and then you could ask your very critical question. Well, and we want to emphasize that, so there are a lot of people here please do not interrupt the interview so that we have a kind of re can have a really nice hour here. Um, well, without further ado, let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Pujimont. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Pujimont. Once again, a very warm welcome here at Room for Discussion, uh, our 10-year anniversary. Um, I must say we have had a lot of interesting uh, guests over the past 10 years. We never had someone who was not able to go back to his own country at the moment. Um, that's, of, ser of course, a serious, uh, serious case. Now, we can imagine you miss your culture, you miss your family, your daughters. Um, but because we know there's a lot of tension in the audience, we know that there's a lot of controversy around your visit, uh, we thought, um, Jasper and I thought, let's start with something nice, which makes you <laughs> feel comfortable here at stage, and therefore, we decided to cook some dishes, some Catalan dishes <laughs> this morning. <laughs> um, 
so we thought at least you feel a little bit welcome here. You don't have to be nervous. Thank you very much. The questions so we will ask later on in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I understand, es, Escalibada? Escalibada, yeah. Sí. Y, y <laughs> and Anjob? And Shabba Saitons. And Shabba Saitons. And the last one? It's uh, el Trinchat, or it's Escalibada. Escal All right, wonderful. Well, <laughs> I, I, I propose that we have a little <laughs> slide. Later, later, later. Later on? Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll have a later on, but don't hesitate to, uh, to taste. But it's from the local Catalan restaurant here in Amsterdam. So but but uh, on, on, on a more serious note, so, so you haven't been to Catalonia for almost a year now. So, so how does that feel to, to not be able to go back home? Well, first of all, uh, let me say thank you very much for your uh, invitation to, uh, to be present at uh, this event. I want to apologize because I'm not a fluent English speaker, so I will try to do the best of my in order to explain a very, a very complex uh, uh, issue, a very complex European uh, issue. Well, as you can imagine, it's not easy for me, from a personal point of view, to live uh, to live outside of my country with, uh, alone, um, without my, my wife, my doctors. Um, it's, an, it's not easy, no. really. But um, still I feel at home in Belgium. Oh, really? Yes, because Europe is our home. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling uh, at home today, for example, in Amsterdam. Because of the snacks? Yes. <laughs> the <top laughs> <of Amsterdam. laughs> no. no, sure, uh, really. Um, I have not the, uh, the, the feel to, to live outside my um, domestic world. No, uh, no, no. no. And, and, and so, so you're, you're traveling around Europe, so yep. you've been to Germany, Denmark, and you live Scot in Belgium. Scotland, Scotland. Scot Scotland. Uh, Switzerland. And, and so do you travel around in fear? Are you afraid of being arrested, that the police can come around? Well, I was arrested. Uh, when yeah, yeah, uh, so in Germany. Uh, in Germany, when, when I returned I from uh, Finland, Finland. Uh, after, after attending a conference, conference in the Helsinki University, University, after travel to Switzerland. Switzerland. When, when I was, I was in uh, Copenhagen the first time, um, I received a threat, threat come from the Spanish judiciary power, power saying, saying if you, you uh, go, go there, there probably, probably we will uh, demand, demand your arrest. arrest. I, decided I decided to travel, to travel. Yeah. because yeah. my duty yeah. is to explain, despite, despite the risk, the risk uh, because the crisis, the crisis must, must be explained. explained. Yeah. Well, well we, we, we are very happy that, that, uh, that you're here. So far, everything goes well, I think. I think yeah. you don't have to, uh, sure. to fear here to, uh, to be removed from the, from the stage. Um, uh, on, a, on a more serious note, you, you wrote a book. You, you travel around. Your book has just been published, uh, A Catalan Crisis Opportunity for Europe. Yeah. Um, you explain the way you grew up in the Franco regime at, at a young age. Now, we've seen the, the rise of the Catalan independence movement was actually in the past. 10 years uh, uh, it heated up. Now, you have always believed in uh, independent Catalonia. What, what made you believe so from the very young age, way before the majority of Catalans or, or a large part of Catalans believed so? Uh, well, I, was, uh, I always has defended the independence of Catalonia, but yeah. also I accept the idea, and in fact, I, I work with that idea yeah. that the Spanish state could be our own state. Uh, if they finally recognize the identity of Catalonia and we can uh, be Spaniards uh, as Catalans. How does it work? So on the, on the same time, you, you have always strived for an independent Catalonia, but on the same time not be independent from Spain. Uh, well, it's quite difficult to explain, but yes. Uh, after the Franco's death, uh, and also uh, from the approval of the Spanish uh, constitution in 1978, 40 years ago, uh, we, decide we decide together to construct, to construct a new democratic, democratic European modern Spanish, Spanish state. state. Yeah. Yeah. And that concerns uh, Catalonia too. And we, and we try, try to do the best. We are we supported, are the governments in the, from the, the left, the right, the majority, the minority, uh, facing all the challenges, the entering the European Union, the Maastricht Agreement, the Euro, the financial crisis. So finally, Finally, we, we after, after do all things, things in order to obtain that uh, 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 kind of recognition of our identity within the Spanish state, we discovered in 2010 
that way was not possible. Yes, yeah, so we're so going to talk about that in a minute, about 2010. It's an important event. Um, and also in your book, you mentioned that the Catalans are treated as second-class citizens. Well, why is that the case? Yes, if you look, for example, in questions of language, um, I can use my own language in the Spanish parliament, for example. I can use my uh, uh, language... The size of the, the judge. judge. One, judge One judge who works in Catalonia is not forced to understand Catalan. Um, that only concerning the, the language uh, rights. But if you look, the, for example, the Spanish budget, and uh, you finally uh, um, prove what exactly means uh, when the, the Spanish government uh, executed the whole amount uh, in the rest of the regions, and you year after year were below the level of execution of the rest, of course, you receive more, uh, less money than the rest in order to improve your, your country, to serve better your citizens. And we can accept one year, two years of travels, but after 40 years, that reality, that is clear. You are not treated as a Spaniard at the first level. Yeah, there's a lot happened. And what interested me was that in 2006, so yeah. to go a bit back, um, only 15% of the uh, inhabitants of Catalonia supported independence. Well, so right. what was the relationship with Spain very good at that moment? Uh, well, yes, because the, mm, the traditional uh, politic in Catalan, the, the political tradition from the Catalanist, pro-Catalan uh, parties was to try to improve, to modernize the Spanish state. Yeah. What was the, in fact, mm, the pro-independence movement was always a minority, a, minority, a political minority. minority. Look, when, when the, the Spanish, Spanish Constitutional, Constitutional Court, Court decides to suspend and to reinterpret re the main articles of our Statute of Autonomy yeah, so in 2010, 2010 right? at yeah. that moment, from 135 seats in Catalan Parliament, only 14 were a member elected uh, from a pro-independent party. Yeah. Five uh, uh, years after that, we are 72. So, so, so maybe it's good for the audience to know. So in 2010, there was, there was a statute that would give, uh, I explain correctly, that would give Catalonia more autonomy. So in 2006, so that there was a law that would give Catalonia more uh, autonomy. And then in 2010, the Constitutional Court in Spain said, no, we're not going to do this. And then, is that, is that the main turning yeah, yeah. point in is the whole sense? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very important point. In my book, I said, at that moment, in the brain of the significant part of Catalan community, uh, each of uh, our citizens has decided to, to make an intimated declaration of independence. Because the majority of Catalan people don't uh, support before that the idea of an independent Catalonia. For, for understand clearly uh, what was going on at that time, first you must to remember we approved that law in the Catalan parliament in 20. Uh, fifth, uh, five, with a huge majority. Yeah. Uh, when 120 um, parliamentaries voted for yes. After that, the Spanish parliament approved with a huge majority that law, and finally we approved it yeah. through the referendum. Yeah, so, there was, so there was a lot of anger in, in 2010 when that uh, law uh, got rejected. Uh, that also led to, uh, to two big and unofficial referendums that were organized, one in 2014, yeah. right, and one in 2017. The non it was a non-binding consultation. Non-binding consultation yeah. in which 80% voted in favor yeah. with a turnout around 40%. In, yeah. in 2017, uh, in 2016, you became president. In 2017, the uh, referendum, um, yeah. uh, the, the, the well-known referendum on the 1st of October was organized. Now, we were wondering if you see such a quick increase in the amount of si Catalan citizens that are in favor of independence from 15% in 2006 to, let's say, around 45, 50% nowadays. Um, do you see a possibility that this um, could also go backwards? That did you say, let's say if, um, if this, um, this law that was uh, rejected in 2006, if it gets re-implemented, actually this whole Catalan movement um, uh, will disappear again to a minimum? Well, it could happen uh, because the reality is moving. Um, if you mean if the Constitutional Court uh, has respected the decision of the uh, people of Catalonia, uh, will we be at that point? Sure not. Yeah, is it possible to sure get... Not. Well, I, I'm asking this because you could also imagine that you say, uh, well, 
um, uh, Spain or Madrid has crossed a point and it won't be possible to, to get back? Or you say this is actually a very moving uh, uh, movement which on, on, on one day now in 2017 a lot of people might be in favor but maybe in the next five years uh, that could be back at 15%. Well, the, the, the things are changing, of course. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting to see that it happens on in such a quick period of time. Well, it's not, um, it's not a quick period of time, but uh, if you mean, um, if a Spain uh, propose a kind of devolution max uh, in sense of uh, that Cameron has done, in the case of Scotland, yeah. the majority of Catalan people could renounce, we don't know. The only way to know that is to ask yeah. <laughs> and to accept the results. Uh, I, I always say I will accept a negative result of a referendum about the independence of Catalonia. But yeah. we don't know if the majority of Catalan people are in favor of a new statute of autonomy or in favor uh, of an uh, in independent state. Because yeah. we must to ask the people. And we demand the right to ask the people. And only for exercise the right to ask, there are nine people in jail, seven people in exile, a lot of measures persecuted. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we are right. claiming for the right to ask. Exactly, and and we will discuss this uh, in the in the in the next topic on Kay. the question of democracy, right? Who <laughs> should be able to ask, and who do you ask? Um, for now, I'm just looking at the audience. There are a lot of people in the audience. I'm sure uh, there will be a lot of questions. We can only pick a few. Uh, I see one hand over there. Um, please, a specific question regarding to the topics that we did have just discussed: the rise of the independence movement. For Mr. Putin. Uh, first of all, I have a lot of deep respect for your courage to travel around Europe and to really stand for what you believe in. But my question to you is, if you ask the people of your nation what they want, independence or not, do you truly believe that you can narrow it down to a yes or a no? Because The Guardian has produced a series of Catalan people who were interviewed freely and they were saying, we don't want to narrow it down to yes or no. We believe in a yes, but, no, but. You're narrowing it down to a yes or a no, and you're not allowing the people of Catalan to Catalonia, sorry, to really emphasize what they want. Correct. Do you think that? So, my sorry, my yeah. question is: Do you think a yes or a no is the true answer for independence for Catalonia? Well, if you I mean uh, it's the independence, the only possibility to be asked to the people, yes, I say no. There are other possibilities, but uh, I say in the table. There are one single proposal to the Catalan people is to build an uh, independent state. But we accept to, to choose, choose between, between the that, that alternative, alternative or, or a kind, kind of, of devolution max. But that is um, it's up to the Spanish government to say something about that. Well, it's let not our duty. Le let me build up on that because I think on the referendum in 2014, the yeah. unofficial referendum, yeah. An other question was yeah. asked than the one you asked in 2017. Yeah, sure. It was, are you agree uh, Catalonia uh, must be a uh, state? And if, you, if yes, uh, that the state must be independent or, or part uh, in a Spanish uh, federation or a Spanish confederation. Well, we are, uh, we are so really to, to work with that. So, so in 2014, the, uh, uh, you could actually get two questions. First, do you want uh, uh, Catalonia to become an independent state? Uh, an autonomous state yep. and secondly do you want it to become independent what was the reason that this form of question was not chosen in your referendum in 2017 well because we finally that uh, referendum in, in the first of october was a binding referendum was approved by a law in yeah. the Catalan parliament and uh, was official it's not a kind of poll but you could I have asked um, that question uh, right? yes, uh, we c but we introduced in the question the word republic that is a fact that in Catalonia they are more pro-republican than the partisans of the independence. That is clear in the polls. Uh, you can see uh, obviously that, uh, that uh, figures. But I including the word republic, we appeal the people in Catalonia that probably don't, don't, don't like the Catalonia independent, but prefers to live in a society, organize it, by the rules of the Republic. For that reason, we choose one single option. But the, if you mean, is another kind of question possible in a such referendum? Yes, yes, Kay. it is. Well, so, um, so we're going to talk about the referendum in a minute. Uh, yeah. about, but first, so we have the whole independence movement. We have uh, 2010 and 
Um, so there was a huge mobilization of this, this independence movement. It grew exponentially. And then you came into the picture. 2016, yeah. you were mayor of Girona. Yeah. Um, and you were asked to become president of Catalonia. Yeah. Did, you, did you expect this would ever happen? No, no, uh, <laughs> no, absolutely not. And I, when I, uh, when, when my former president Artur Mas asked me, do you want to be the candidate? I, s I, I asked, well, uh, um, how many time I have uh, to decide that? 15 yeah. minutes. He's, well, a, qu <laughs> a quarter, Bec only a short quarter. Well, okay, 20 minutes. <laughs> and in 20 minutes, I must to decide that. So it all went through your mind in those 15 minutes? It's like a cafetera, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's a... Uh, but I have no choice. If, uh, seriously, if I uh, have renounced uh, that uh, offer, I will, uh, I, I, uh, I will quit the politics. I, I quit the politics. Yeah. So and, um, it's I was forced to accept if I would continue doing politics. Yeah, because from day one you, you accepted uh, you accepted his request. You became president of Catalonia, and from day one you have campaigned for a referendum on the independence of Catalonia, right? Requesting the Catalans whether they want an independent Catalonia or not. Um, before we discuss the, the referendum and, and democracy in general, let's go quickly to this, this day, the 1st of October. That's probably also how uh, you became famous in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, you became famous all around the world, basically. Um, it, was a, it was almost exactly one year ago, 1st of October. Very controversial, uh, considered illegal by the uh, High Court of Spain. Um, we read that, that the ballot boxes, they were not provided by the Spanish government, but they had to be bought in China. They were stored in France and then taken to Catalonia to, in a rush, make people be able to vote. How, how did that go? Well, that is the, the success of globalization. And uh, yes, it's <laughs> a thing and the empowering of the society. Yeah. Uh, we believe in the country when uh, uh, which country the, the, the population has the responsibility uh, of the public, uh, the public matters. Yeah. That uh, referendum will not possible, uh, would not be possible without the engagement of the huge part of the Catalan society. Of course, we buy the ballot boxes not through the official ways. Yeah. So we, we don't use one single public euro to buy the papers, the ballot, ballot boxes or the, 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 the papers. So who put money in? So how did you get it's volunteers, crowdfunding, yeah. uh, because the will of the people is based in the, in, in, in the responsibility also uh, to the people. And we organize very quickly and uh, very uh, uh, confidential mod in fly mod, uh, uh, a network of volunteers around yeah. the Catalonia, but with help from outside concerning the technological tools yeah, yeah. to allow a, a tool called universal census, uh, very interesting uh, mm -hmm. to use that, uh, to uh, distribute the ballot yeah. boxes around so the so country. So th and that was quite a successful operation, you would yes. say. And so, but the police tried everyone um, to prevent everyone from voting that day, yeah. and especially you. They didn't, they didn't want you to vote. So, yeah. but so how was that day for you? How did you experience Wh that? Where did you wake up, for instance? How you were hidden, probably, because the police did not want uh, you to vote because that would encourage yes, other people uh, to, yes, to go uh, to vote. Uh, when I wake up, uh, um, I live in a house in close to Girona City. Uh, I discovered an helicopter from the military uh, police, uh, Spanish military police, uh, surrounding uh, my head uh, and, and follow me uh, with my car. Uh, I try, well, I know, I received the, 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 the information from my, my team in the um, polling station um, and with the, the, the use of the extremely violence uh, from the Spanish yeah. uh, police there. I decide not to be there in order to not create a, a huge provocation. Yeah. Oh. And I decide to use that tool, the universal census, to exercise my right to vote in another uh, yeah. polling station. I try to, to, be, to, to be close to my, my, my uh, polling vote. Yeah. I was followed by the helicopter. Uh, Sounds exciting. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the universal census was not able to use there. I d we decided to return my home and in order to return my home, we must to, to, to stop in the bridge. And, and at that, that point, we decided to change the, 
the car. Jesus, oh, it sounds wow. like a movie. To, to put my mobile phone in the other car, yeah. uh, the for the, the <laughs> my wife's mobile phone too, to use a car, not official car, and to go in the other place, uh, which uh, was uh, able to use the universe sensors. Wow. And three cars, uh, one car, the offi my official car, returns to my home. Yeah. And the helicopter follows my car, <laughs> just to my home. <laughs> and my car, another car goes in the other direction, and my car was just to Cornellà de Terry to exercise the my right yeah. to vote. And, uh, and it uh, worked out? C congrats? It sounds like a, like a no, <laughs> difficult no, strategy? No, it's very sad to, to, to do that of course, in order yeah. to exercise the right to vote. Yeah, yeah. It, we don't know to... Yeah. It's very... Um, it's not a... I'm not happy to explain how we succeed yeah. to, to win. To Beca one. Because you did succeed. There was um, a 43% turnout on the end. Um, uh, Ninety-two percent voted in favor of independence, uh, which is probably sounds like a high number, but a lot of uh, uh, pro-unionists uh, uh, um, um, decided to to remain home. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about this tools. You say you um, you appeal to the fact that the, the the people's voices should be heard, right? And there are a couple of ways. Um, if and if if we look at uh, political science perspective, there are a couple of ways in order to make this happen. Indeed, w your tool that you said uh, would be most effective is the organization of a referendum. Um, it can also be done through uh, seeking compromise be between the elected leaders of, of in this case, uh, the Catalan region and Madrid. Um, let's discuss first uh, this referendum and uh, especially the question, who are the people that should, should decide upon the future of Catalonia? Are these all citizens of Spain? Or are these only the, the citizens of Catalonia? Because you work within the framework of the Constitution of Spain, which you have also signed. Um, so, so how would you? What would you argue? Well, it's, on it's, that? A, it's a very interesting question, um, but uh, we can you cannot uh, put that question if you before uh, answer uh, another question. Yeah. Has the Catalan people the right to be independent or not? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if who finally will decide, yeah, no, but we, we demand the right to be independent. And of course, we, uh, we expect to decide for ourselves because it's the, m it's the, the, main, uh, the main attitude in the d that cases. There is on one single exception, is the case of the independence Algeria. of Algeria. Yeah. Uh, but the rest of the cases of the referendum of the determination, the part who want to be independent, who votes. But if finally, the question, the, the answer of that question from the Spanish government is yes, you are uh, you are right to be independent, but the only way to be independent is the the what the whole Spain. We are not at that point. Yeah. So so you say that the people can decide whether they, they want independence. So uh, maybe a strange hypothetical question. For for example, you Catalonia becomes independent maybe in 30 years, yep. um, and uh, Catalonia is an independent nation, and the people of Barcelona decides okay. We're going to hold a referendum, and people show up. Fifty-one percent vote. Okay, uh, we should be uh, independent. And would you allow Barcelona to become independent? Uh, two things about that. First, uh, the 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 borders are not something sacred mm -hmm. uh, by the grace of God. Is uh, every border is an artificial convention made by the humanity? That, yeah. So mm, it's not nothing sacred. That idea that the unity of Spain is a kind of religion, I'm fighting against that. Yeah, borders are changing. Second, has been happening. second yeah. we approved. In fact, we 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 have a, a situation like uh, that in Catalonia now, is in the case of the La Baldaran, is in a valley, uh, which uh, his uh, own language is Occitan, with its own culture, and we approved. Uh, I remember, I think, was it we, we unanimously, in Catalan Parliament, the law regarding that valley accepting the right of self-determination. So we, uh, you, we answer that question. Nothing is forever. Nothing is forever. So, so every, every group uh, in no. the world can no, just no. say, OK, we have 51%. No, we want uh, no, 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 that concerns the demos. Who is the demos? W what is the demos in that in yeah. every case? We are acting in the, in the rule of the international uh, treaties and covenants. The, 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 in the international covenant on civil and political rights Mm -hmm. The Article 1 say all peoples are right to self-determination. And that appeals to the demos. If finally one part of Catalonia 
or one part of the Valencia? Want to join Catalonia? Why not? Why not? Sure, but like what you say, depends on the demos. Um, but what is the demos in that sense? If, for instance, there, I'm sure people always say that Amsterdam is a kind of a bubble within the Netherlands. If we say in Amsterdam, wha whatever, we're not going to listen to the provinces anymore. We're just going to stick with ourselves and have some progressive politics. Um, uh, is that indeed the demos that you say that is uh, 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 that is kind of the way that we should organize ourselves within within the world? In, in the sense of the international covenant on civil political rights, that concerns the people. And the people, it's clearly uh, a, con a group of uh, m people who recognize themselves uh, in the certain way of live mm. and the will in common to construct a sure. kind of society, sure, how to manage. Th there is, of course, for some things, there is a demos, a, a metropolitan demos, for example, concerning the uh, mobility, uh, the decision to allow or not the diesel cars enter in London or mm -hmm. in Paris or in Amsterdam yeah. is a decision uh, up to the uh, local authorities yeah. that it exists for some kind of questions yeah. exists uh, one demos but for exercise the right of self-determination that is uh, uh, in the in the sense of the international the, the, the United Nations car uh, is concerning the people yeah okay I think um, I would like to move on to the second question regarding this referendum which is, uh, once we have agreed on who are the people, in, you, in your case mm -hmm. you say it should be the Catalans that vote for uh, whether they want independence or not. Um, the next question remains, is the majority indeed democratic, or put it a different way, um, how do you deal with the fact that the other half of the Catalan society uh, does not actually agree with mm -hmm. uh, a Catalan independence? Uh, it's enough uh, to have one vote more to decide to be independent. You think or so? Or let me say differently it's enough to have one vote more to remain in Spain. Uh, yes, technically, yes, because it's the case of Brexit or mm -hmm. other referendums, but it's possible to uh, accept to have a qualified majority, uh, like in the case of Montenegro's referendum, in order to apply the results. We are open to discuss about that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But st still you have a, a country where 49% where perhaps yeah. d does not agree. So, so what do you tell those people? That maybe they are worried that they will lose their job, that the, the, the independence will have severe economic consequences. How would you deal with that? Oh, there is uh, some kind of economic consequences, but not negatives. Probably most of their positives. Uh, you probably have heard last uh, month or last uh, year, yeah. uh, the, cons the, the economical consequences of, of the struggle for independence in Catalonia. But if you look the official figures, you can see the growth of Catalan economy is higher than the Spanish economy. But and it's always been the case, right? Yes. There yeah. are oh. rich reasons. Um, but the, the Republic, uh, it's about future, it's not about the present. And the future, the shared future, with a Catalan who believes or not in independence and we must to be able to use our tools and our resources in order to construct to ensure a good health system a yeah. good educational yeah. system but still would you agree that if uh, catalonia becomes independent there will be a, a great economic shock that there will so already 3000 businesses left companies left catalonia after the referendum so there is this there's this tension yes but if you look i insist if you look to the official figures, uh, the number of the, the enterprises uh, fixed based in Catalonia, you can see the highest number in the last nine years. So th it's obvious, there are yeah, mobility. A severe crisis, right? Uh, th no, th th yeah. there are mobi mobili mobility, of course. Yeah. And some uh, big enterprises has announced to move its social seat, not yeah. uh, fiscal or direction or production uh, center but only the social seat, some of them. But in fact, finally, we increase yeah. the number of the enterprises based on Catalonia. What, what, what I'm wondering, because um, obviously you, you fight for the, the voice of the people, in, in your book also you mention often that we Catalans want independence. Uh, why do you actually refer to that? Well, the same way when the I heard the Spanish prime minister or the French prime minister talking for from well, the king of but Spain. But, but you disagree with them, right? So uh, why would <laughs> yes, you follow Yes, well, their, I, their use, I use the, the convention 
happen uh, in, the, in the parliamentary system. If you are a majority, you are elected by majority of the people, yeah. you are the government, you need to work for the whole people. So uh, when yeah. I organize, when we organize a referendum, uh, we organize the referendum in order to allow the people who are against independence to vote against it. And yeah. to ban that uh, referendum is not to protect the right the Catalan people who are against independence to express themselves against that. All right, um, I think that's clear. Maybe it's good to, before we move on from the referendum to the compromise uh, okay. uh, part, um, to see whether there are a few audience questions on the topics we just discussed. Um, and please, some students that raise their hands, no journalists. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, over there, I see a question. Yeah, please stand up if you ask your question. Don't you think it's a bit uh, hypocritical to ask the, um, that 49% that does not agree with independence to just wait for it and see what happens? Because I'm sure that 51% is willing to, to, to like sustain that economic impact that independence would have, but maybe that 49% isn't. So, no, you, you, are, you are right. The, the, the best way to know uh, uh, what people want is to have a public, normal, a change of opinions with a lot of information regarding the effects, positive and negative, uh, the consequences to be independent or to remain in Spain. For that, we need to, to, to have the uh, engagement from the Spanish government and uh, for the pro-unionist parties to participate in a such debate. It's impossible to have a normal debate if one of the uh, parts concerned uh, by the question, uh, don't agree uh, to talk about it. Uh, but you are right. Um, uh, it's a debate that needs a lot of information, a change of information. No one has the truth. Uh, no one has the, the, the right. Uh, one part of the reality, the, the truth is on the other side. And that is democracy. And we try, we try to do that. But the last time we uh, tried to do that in the Catalan parliament, the consequences is the, the president, the former president of Catalan Parliament, now is in jail for allowing a such debate. All right, thank you for your question. I saw a, a hand raised here. He was first <coughs> here in front. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I want to uh, talk about something you mentioned at the beginning. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that there's uh, some people who were sent to prison because they, uh, they wanted to, uh, to hear the voice of the Catalans. But uh, isn't it true, and correct me if I'm wrong again, that uh, these people were Im imprisoned more because they tried to take away the power that Spain has in a territory uh, instead of just asking a question? Well, they are accused by rebellion, by rebellion and embezzlement of funds, like me, by, like myself. Um, rebellion, uh, in the Spanish civil code, penal code, sorry, uh, exists the use of violence, uh, the use of weapons, and the use of uh, guns in order to remove the uh, constitutional order. It's obvious not, it's obviously is not the case. We use a tool or a weapon called ballot boxes. And second, uh, after the last reform of the penal code, the Spanish legislators decide to uh, remove from the, or to withdraw from the, uh, the penal court uh, the organization of a referendum for independence. It's not a crime in Spain. It's not a crime that they are in jail for one, uh, two of them, three of them for more than 11 months uh, without trial. Uh. Um, thank you for, very, uh, there, there are a lot of questions, so is, is it very necessary that Okay, very short. Is so it relevant? Do, you, do you agree that uh, nobody should be judged for trying to take away the power that a country has over a part of its territory? But we, we, we decide, we acting in the frame of the Catalan power. The parliamentary decision was a parliamentary decision, was not uh, made by uh, insurrection in the streets or a revolutionary movement uh, was voted yeah. in Catalan parliament. All right, thank you for your question. Um, a very a question over there, and please keep it concise so we can move on with the interview after. Yeah, thank you very much. 
Uh, Mr. President, you talked about the past and that um, few people were sent to jail and you were living uh, obviously in exile. And do you have, I want to ask about the future, do you have any plans of, uh, I don't know, reaching a compromise to the Spanish government in order to back to uh, Catalonia and uh, maybe do some other things in order to uh, fulfill your requests? Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, n nothing has a relationship with my personal situation. I'm ready to be in jail, to be in exile, or to return. It depends on the situation. But nothing um, concerning the political solution, uh, I want to separate my personal situation that the political situation, the political resolution. Um, the only way, really, really, the only way to solve correctly uh, is to agree with the Spanish uh, state how, how we can demand to Catalan people its will, they will. Um, this is the only way, and for that we need to allow the conditions uh, that could create the conditions to allow that uh, uh, discussion. Uh, it's not possible to have a normal discussion with political prisoners, uh, people yeah. in exile, uh, police acting in the streets. Um, that is not um, the best idea to right. manage such situation. Thank you very much for your question. It's a nice bridge to the topic that we wanted to discuss, which was uh, the, the compromise here in the Netherlands. Uh, we call it uh, polderen maybe, uh, sometimes maybe it's hard <laughs> for us to uh, understand all these independence movements um, um, while usually, uh, of course, your situation is much more tough. But here in Holland we are known for seeking compromise, uh, finding a solution somewhere in between. So I would like to ask a question on that. You uh, mentioned in an interview with the Belgium newspaper to Morgen last week, and again I read it in the NRC this morning as well, that you said that you regret that you have been hesitant about declaring Catalan independence. Why yes. was that the case? Because I yes, think it builds on it. That was in the, the 10th of October, uh, four days after the official results of the referendum, I present that, uh, that results in front of the Catalan parliament. Yeah. Uh, re uh, uh, regarding the our laws, uh, after that, we must to apply the results. But several days before, two, one week before, uh, we, and I myself, w uh, was in touch with the Spanish government. After the 1st of October, after the King's speech, uh, we, we, we decide to talk if yeah. there is a possibility to open a window for a dialogue. To, to compromise as well? Or yes. was it because you're the... Th there was more a compromise. Okay. And yeah. I, uh, the from the Spanish uh, side, they asked me, well, please, do not do nothing irreversible. Yes, okay, I will make, I will do something very difficult for me, is to declare independence, but to suspend the effects in order to allow that window of yeah. opportunity to dialogue. And you said that has been the greatest mistake you made. Yeah, because the dialogue uh, uh, not, uh, doesn't happen. The dialogue doesn't happen. Well, uh, at that time, indeed, it was the, the Partido Popular, right, the conservative yeah. government in power. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, they are known to be generally uh, opposing uh, any form of uh, Catalan uh, autonomy, uh, if I can... I think you can agree with me on that. Yep. Now, um, this year, um, of course, you have a new uh, president, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sanchez, uh, from the Socialist Party. He has actually um, at least mentioned in the news, you say you, you don't get concrete uh, messages from him yet, but um, he has said that um, let's, let's organize a referendum on Catalan autonomy. Um, it seems like he is more open for conversation, that he is indeed trying to, 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 to get these two blocks together, to, to seek a compromise. However, I believe that you only want to negotiate if a referendum by the Catalan people is present. Is that right? Well, uh, w we, we must not forget uh, that we voted for Pedro Sánchez. Yeah. Pedro Sánchez is president because our vote, our support in the Spanish parliament. Yeah. And we expect to know if the receipt from the Pedro Sánchez receipt is the version, the 2.0 uh, version of the Rajoy's receipt. Yesterday you called it Rajoy 2.0. Or right? is, an, yeah. is a, no, a new one, yeah. maybe in the better version. Um, uh, we don't expect to vote about the new statute of autonomy. No one in Catalonia is demanding that, uh, that way. We yeah. only expect to know what is exactly the Spanish project for Catalonia. Yeah. Is 
the current statu quo or uh, they uh, understand, understood this, the, the, the 1st of October um, decision yep. uh, and propose a Spanish project Yep. Spanish way to solve the situation. Yep. But, but, but let me... Uh, uh, yes, uh, pedoscience has changed its vocabulary mm -hmm. and the climate change has changed. The climate... Climate change changed. as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The climate Absolutely. has changed yeah. uh, in, the, in the Spanish politics. But, <laughs> but the politics are exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. Exactly the same. Uh, uh, just, just to get some things clear, in case he is willing to negotiate, let's say he calls you tomorrow, he says, uh, uh, Carlos, we have to, we have to sit together. Um, you know what? We are going to organize a referendum on increased autonomy on a certain uh, amount of of of, of serious uh, uh, approaches towards uh, coming together to Catalonia. But we won't organize or allow a referendum on um, uh, on the independence of <laughs> Catalonia. Would you even consider negotiating with him? Well, I I'm, I'm I'm quite sure that the first thing that C Pedro Sánchez could demand me is uh, please don't explain I call you to talk about <laughs> the <European laughs> uh, and I understand that sure yeah. um, well is it the red line for you the red line is the any kind of agreement must be uh, accepted by the Catalan people sure. through the referendum yes we agree with that we agree with a, a part a significant part of the uh, statement from Pedro Sánchez we need, or we call a referendum for self-government. Mm, Till self, yeah. we are agree. Yeah. We need a new referendum for self. The only, the few differences are determination or government. Yeah. And I propose to work with that. Okay. Um, and finally, if, if there are different compromise, I can't imagine, but imagine yeah. if uh, finally the, 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 the Spain government proposed something like the uh, Statute of Autonomy approved in 25 for, uh, for a Catalan uh, parliament, for instance, um, we must to agree also uh, what the results means. For example, in case of no. In case of no, that means we are happy with the current status quo? Obviously, yeah. no. In case of no, we refuse uh, that uh, proposal. What does it mean? What next? Yeah. And we so must to talk about that. So, yeah. so you keep the door open generally to say we, we can talk about uh, simply more autonomy rather than sure. only the organization we of a referendum on independence. We demand the, 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 the freedom and the right to explain our project to be an independent republic. Yeah. And we accept the project, uh, a, different okay. a, a different project from the Spanish side. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Spanish government has his, his right to propose a different solution okay. and our commitment our compromise is to work with both uh, proposals on the table that is okay. a negotiation yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so so yeah we can c then say that we are quite in a political deadlock right now and in your book you su suggest that Donald Tusk uh, the <laughs> president of the European Council should mediate in this in this this conflict do you do you do you think he will help well, it was a kind of metaphor uh, to say <laughs> that, uh, mm, there is a role for the European Union in uh, such crisis. Yes, because it's a European crisis. It's a European issue. And uh, it's not acceptable uh, to, to see our Europe uh, with nothing to do and nothing to say about what's going on in Catalonia. We are more than two million European citizens demanding exercise one right recognized by the majority of the European states, the right of self-determination. And uh, a significant part of that voters were bitten uh, by the Spanish police. And the fundamental rights are violated. But yeah, but there, there after the referendum, there wasn't hardly any government um, supporting the independence. So no do you, you remain optimistic that the European Union would do something well about this? Because I believe in Europe. Uh, for example, that kind, that lack of uh, compromise regarding the humanitarian crisis in the Mediterranean, I, I'm not happy with the, that Europe. Yeah. When during the, the last conflicts in the in the former Yugoslavia, the sign of European Union was not acceptable. Uh, I believe in a more politically unified Europe, uh, uh, acting as a political actor in the crisis, yeah. not only in the case of financial crisis. 
or trade crisis, also in politics. And when in a part of the Union there are a threat against the fundamental values, it doesn't matter if in Hungary or in Poland or in Italy or in Spain, that concerns the whole Europe. Yeah. Because the rights are for all the European citizens. Um, so far, I can imagine you have been disappointed by the, uh, by the way that the European Union has, has approached your, your referendum. Uh, you have been, for one year, uh, you've been living in Brussels now. Do you see a change in the perspective taken on Catalonia by official members of, of, of Parliament? Well, I was disappointed not by the official opinion from the European Union concerning the referendum. But by its leaders. No, but no? it's silence regarding the violation of the fundamental rights. That is my disappointment. Um, is the, the European Union has nothing to do uh, uh, w regarding uh, that concerning that uh, huge violence used against European citizens. I insist in that because the, 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 the fundamental uh, rights protected by European Union um, concerns all European citizens, despite if the political position from the European institutions is very close to the uh, political position from the Spanish uh, to the Spanish yeah. uh, government. Yeah. Is that my disappointment? Not concerning the referendum. Of the so so you, you, you're, try you're traveling around Europe to try to get this message out. Yeah. Um, and so I've read that last week you ate a peace paella. <laughs> I'm not, I've read it with the Flemish nationalists. So the flat. Uh ah, yeah, the NVI, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace paella. Paella, paella, very yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, the paella, <laughs> spell, yeah it's it. Um, so are you working together with those other no, independence no. movements? No, 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 Not no. no. They no, just no, invited no. you. And no, no, no. Uh, I'm doing politics for Catalonia, not for Flanders or for Belgium. Um, it was suggested you might be on their list for the European yes, elections. Yes, but. Uh, that is not uh, no way. Fake, fake news. No, <laughs> yes, it <laughs> was a fake news because no one single proposal, no intention. Uh, when I was in Germany, some uh, on another party has proposed it to me to be elected from its uh, uh, candidate for list. No, Which party was that? I can't remember the name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it appear, <laughs> appears. No, 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 no. <laughs> was in the media. Was in the media. Ah, in the media. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, now we support all the peoples who are fighting for exercise the right of self-determination. But once said this, we respect the way uh, of each uh, country decides how to exercise that right. We, we, don't know, we don't want to be involved in other political systems or other political cases. Okay, so and in, in your book, uh, as we talk about Europe, you also have a chapter when you talk about your, your kind of vision of Europe and you say you want to go, more, uh, Europe should go more to a federal Europe, uh, United States of Europe, you could say. Um, so how do you see Catalonia in this federal Europe? What will be his, this, the, the place of Catalonia? I think a, a more federal Europe will recognize more diversity, uh, will recognize its own diversity which is more riches than the, 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 the map of the borders, official borders. And I believe in your, in your European unified politically. Yep. And um, I have not one single problem to have only a passport saying you are European. Because yep. our struggle is not um, a classical nationalist struggle, uh, demanding, first of all, a flag, borders, and passport, and army, and, and currency. We only want to have in our hands the tools and the resources to serve our citizens. We try to do it within the Spanish state. That was not possible, but it's possible in the, in the frame of the more unified Europe. Yes, sure, and we are for that. And finally, in the, in the challenge of the fourth industrial revolution, when the, the very serious tool, the very serious weapon is the smartphone, you put in the hands of the people one power uh, with no precedent, uh, very uh, enormous power in order to empower people to participate in the manage in of the, in democracy, yeah. not only for vote, no, no, to explain, to opinion, yeah. to have, to do something. Um, for example, the last, um, I've, I think was in uh, August, European Union has ended the poll the uh, question concerning the uh, summer time, if it's not uh, interesting or 
we must change or not uh, summer That's our main concern at yeah. the moment yeah. in Holland. Well, <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of more problems to think about. Less than 1% on the Europe European citizens participated in it. Yeah. This is, that I you think that's not a lot? <laughs> I mean, wha one, one, one percent. It less than one percent. Yes, but for it's the not European. It's a non-issue, right? So yeah, but for the European uh, Commission, they decide to suspend, to yeah. change the policies on the summertime uh, because the majority of the voters. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, sure. yeah. Well, that shows we must to trust to the citizens. The now the societies mm, has power because it's well uh, well formed well connected uh, free uh, and with a capacity to do more than to put paper every four years in a ballot box yeah yeah all right thank you um uh, so much i think we have yeah, some time for some audience questions i think yeah, we have gentlemen. a few minutes left um uh Rainier, i think you will have to walk a little bit i see <laughs> over there um Raise your hand in the, in the back, if you go behind the cameras. I see a hand. Yeah, the gentleman over there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, so my question is in regards to the European Union. So the president of the European Parliament openly stated that Catalonia, uh, if it were to be independent, would never be able to join the European Union. So how do you think Catalonia can survive economically, considering about like two-thirds of your trades uh, go to countries in the European Union? Well, we, we don't believe in the Catalonia outside the European Union. This is not real. For what? Because, first of all, we are 7.5 million uh, European citizens living in Catalonia. And that will not change, despite the statu quo of Catalonia because we will keep our European uh, citizenship. And second, the only way uh, as an independent state uh, to be banned, to remain a part of the European Union, is in case of the recognition of the, Catalon the Republic of Catalonia from the Spanish state. It, if Spain recognizes an independent Catalonia, uh, that means a peaceful agreement. That means an agreement concerning the debt, Spanish debt, concerning the border, the citizenship, the assets, uh, concerning all things in common interest. And what is the most common interest for us? To remain in Europe because we are member uh, of the European Union and we are and if using. The and if that's not possible to stay in the European Union, so then, then the whole independence movement no just one want to be collapsed? No one wants to be outside of the European Union. Look. But it's a hypothetical question, right? Because he says in, in case Catalonia becomes independent, uh, that means that all member states will have to vote again upon the well entrance. Uh, it's probably a question you get a lot. But no, have, have you um, put your thoughts in If that? I say yes, probably one of you could uh, say, well, you are planning to believe outside European Union. Yeah, yeah. I'm not at all that okay, way. Okay, yeah. uh, but there is countries uh, that are not members of the European Union with a very high level of uh, life. Uh, but we, there is no question in yeah. Catalonia concerning yeah. that issue. All right. Um, that, that's clear. Thank you. I would like to go a little bit more that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm afraid we cannot go, go up there, <laughs> but um, over there, yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that you mentioned that uh, you truly believe in the European project, which is something nice to hear, especially nowadays. And my question is, um, do you think that uh, there's the risk that uh, some uh, certain political elites may actually uh, exploit and uh, exacerbate uh, the struggles uh, of uh, some certain sets of the population that uh, ask for uh, self-recognition and uh, independence and autonomy in or and uh, that may actually lead to the collapse uh, of the European project. For instance, uh, in Italy, uh, we have had to pseudo fake referenda in uh, Lombardy and Veneto that ended up uh, to a lesser extent being uh, like a political spot for a, uh, an electoral spot for a certain party that uh, is not part of the coalition, go the government coalition. Yeah. 
Well, uh, to be realistic, there is no one single other region in Europe with a parliament with an absolute majority in the hands of pro-independence party. So that risk uh, could exist, but it's not real. It's not real. We, uh, in the case of uh, Scotland, if Scotland has voted for yes, I'm, I'm quite sure uh, that could not start a domino effect. Um, I think it's not a kind of fake news, but it's, um, it's not based on the real, uh, real fear. Uh, mm, I'm thinking it's like kind of an alibi in order to know, uh, dis discuss about that. Uh, there is no other case that Catalonia, than, uh, like Catalonia, in uh, European uh, uh, region system. But, but for example, if Catalonia becomes independent and it goes really well and you're wealthy, then uh, maybe other groups in Europe would say, oh, we want that as well. Let's go. And but then maybe then you will have your, your domino effect and it will de destabilize. W wait, but if you show the way to be independent is the way to improve the life of our citizens, what is wrong? Well, probably uh, it wouldn't improve the life of others, right? So uh, but uh, no, but probably uh, if you uh, have the ability to manage the differences, to respect the principle of subsidiarity, and to ensure a new empowerment to the citizens, uh, the states uh, were are something less important yeah. than today. And the weight of a state in our lives uh, will uh, decrease in the future, thanks to the globalization, the technology, and the, yeah. the new empowerment of the, the people. All right, clear. Thank you for your question. Over uh, here, because I feel like, uh, I think I should ask a woman. Yeah, over there, because we have had a lot of men. <laughs> Hi. Um, um, just because you mentioned Yugoslavia and that you thought that in the Balkan conflict, the EU uh, did not get involved enough, um, and you want to have the EU's political powers involved more in this conflict, yet on I can't hear you. Sorry. Can, can you, you can you speak up okay. a little bit? Earlier, you stated when yeah. mentioning the Balkan War yeah. that you want to have the EU more politically involved in this process as well, right? On the other hand, you seem to pride yourself with the European value of sovereignty as well. These two seem to clash a little bit, and this might also be a bit of a reframing of the picture of EU in a way that seems to suit you very well, but I don't believe is very realistic. How do you see this? Well, the, the right of self-determination, um, as um, a significant number of experts are saying, is a tool of peace. And uh, a significant number of wars since 1914 has its origin in the lack of commitment to the right of self-determination. So when I ask to the European Union to act more deeply in the c Balkanic cri crisis is to prevent, because it's the more intelligent tool to solve the problems, to prevent it, to accept the right to self-determination of the people who demand this, for example. And um, uh, I believe in a, a political voice, a European political vo voice in the world. Uh, I only heard Mr. Trump, Mr. Putin, the China, but I can hear the European voice uh, in political way. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, so we've talked for an hour. Okay. And so I think we have to, yeah, to close up. I'm sorry for uh, all the But, but you did still not have any of our tapas. Is it maybe, <laughs> is it the, the taste? Or I'm have sorry, but it's too, <laughs> too, early, too, right. it's too early for me. <laughs> <laughs> we can have them afterwards. I well. need to change the... <laughs> um, for, so... My last question here is, um, do you think you will ever be able to return back to Spain? Are you optimistic? Well, in Spain I don't know, but in Catalonia, yes. Uh, yeah. I will return to Catalonia. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, I think that was a the very uh, clear <laughs> answer, which is a, a great <laughs> summary of today's uh, discussion. Um, first of all, I would really like to thank the audience. I must say it's impressive that with such a large crowd, we, had, uh, we were able to have such a constructive debate. Many thanks for your questions. I thought this was a great start of a 10-year anniversary celebration of Room for Discussion. Um, then, secondly, of course, we would like to very much thank Mr. Pujimon for being here. Um, we wish you a lot of luck 
in the coming months, coming years. It's a difficult struggle. It's, it's a hard struggle, and we uh, wish you all the best. So, ladies and gentlemen, please a warm applause for Mr. Pujimon. Thank you very much. <laughs>